Oh, there we go. Now, thank you guys for coming this Sunday. I know we have a lot of guests here, so if you don't know who I am, I'm Matt, and I'm the pastor here. I don't normally dress like this, but now that I know I can get away with jeans and sandals and boardies, it might become a regular thing, so we'll just see. Well, there, you're all for boardies? Hey, I'm good. This is... I didn't do it. <laughs> do you want me to try to play? I can try to play. No, you don't want that? I don't think anyone wants that. Nah, so... I'm just doing a short message before we have baptisms. So we've tried to make our service a lot shorter because we want to celebrate baptisms. They're a really important thing. And we want to take time out to do it. We have two girls that are getting baptized today that are making a choice, which is exciting. It's Gabby, who's sitting down over there. And then Lucia's in the back. So they're being really brave to do that. And I brought extra towels if there's anyone else, so you, know, you never know. But I thought it's better to come prepared, because at least I'll need a towel. <laughs> but I want to give a short message about baptism, and I want to look at one baptism story. And it's the story of Philip and the baptism of the Ethiopian Enoch. Or Enoch. Eunuch. I can never say that. Good. My speaking's going great today. Oh, this is going to be great on the radio over here. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Matt, you messed up you. I just gotta collect myself after that. You're forgiven. I'm forgiven, that's good. I just want to read this story, and then I want to point out three things. So it'll be quick, because I know we have kids in here, and I'm not going to preach a long one, so don't worry, kids, I won't go for 40 minutes. I'm trying to do 10, so it'll be quick. Unless one of the kids gives me a silly face, then I might go longer just to frustrate them, so we'll see. But let's dive into this story. And this is what we read. In Acts chapter 8, this is where we find the story. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a, de a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. So this guy's got a big job. And he's from, like, the other side of the world, pretty much. Let's keep reading. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in his chariot. And he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the Spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him, and he heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb before its shears is silent. So he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life was taken away from them. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom I ask you, does the prophet say this about himself or about someone else? Which is a fair question if you ask me. If you're just reading it, you're kind of like, Who's this about? Is it about the guy writing it or someone else? And then Philip opened his mouth and began with this scripture, and he told him the good news about Jesus. This is after Jesus' death and resurrection. And he tells them all about the amazing things that have been happening. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, see, here's some water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they both went down into the water. Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away. And the eunuch saw him no more and went on rejoicing. So I want to tell you three things that I think are really cool from that baptism story. The first is there's not as many hoops to jump through. 
We like to think there's lots of stuff we have to do before we can get baptized. You know, I've got to say this right prayer. I've got to believe this right thing. But there's really not as many hoops to jump through. You have an Ethiopian eunuch, a guy from the other side of the world, who just sits in the chariot and listens to Philip tell a little bit about Jesus. And then goes, hey, I want to get baptized. That's all it took. We don't have to jump through as many hoops when it comes to baptism. That's why I love it when kids make the choice to get baptized. I think there's something really special on that when a kid does it. And a church allows that to happen. The next thing I think is really cool from this story is the ends of the earth. For us, for us that know, Jesus, when he went up, he gave his disciples a mission, right? Go out to the ends of the earth, baptize them. You know, making disciples. This is a first step in that. This is the ends of the earth in that time. This Ethiopian eunuch from the other side of the world. And I think that's awesome because baptisms are meant to bring people together. Regardless of who you are or where you're from or where you were born. Or you're, if you're an American who can't say eunuch right sometimes, it's all right. You're forgiven. I think that's really important for us to remember. And then the last thing is that it is a special moment. And we see that because after this gentleman's baptized, it says the spirit carries Philip away, which I have an imagination, so I try to imagine that, like if uh, Philip got wings magically and flew away, or if like little fairies, angel fairies came and carried him away, like, I don't know. Angel fairies, it could have happened, who knows? It just says the spirit carried him away, and then Philip's gone. And the unit goes on rejoicing, because it's a special moment when we make this decision, when we decide to get baptized. So today is a really special day. Today I feel privileged that I don't get to dunk anyone, which is like a relief for me, but I get to stay in the water. And it's awesome to be present for stuff like this, because they really are a special moment. I'm sure we all have our different baptism story if we've been baptized. And there's something about it that was special. I know for me, since I like to find the, the laughter in life, the special thing to me was having my parents come to this Pentecostal church from a Catholic background. And there was this one lady who had a big, long horn that she would blow. So it's some sign of like Israel, or I don't really know. I still don't quite understand it all. But my only prayer to God was, please do not have this lady show up with her horn. Whatever you do, God, just like, make that not today. Make it next week, but just please. Sure enough, this lady had her big horn. <laughs> and the first thing I got asked by my parents is, do you know why she does that? And I'm like, nope, I have no idea, Dad. It's a bit strange. Yeah, I know. It was a bit interesting. I don't know. So that was kind of one thing I remember from my baptism story. Just the lightheartedness of it. Having my friends and family there cheering. So I think it's really awesome. There's so many people here to be a part of it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of transition to a time of baptism. So what I need you to do is if you're at the front row, not yet, but after I pray, well, the people up towards the front, we'll go out these doors. The people in the back can go out the back doors. And you'll have a little bit of time, so we don't want to rush it. You have time, you don't have to sprint anyone over to get there and there's lots of room in the shed, and we've tried to set it up nice, so everyone should fit, fingers crossed. We got everyone in here, so that was a perk. So I was a bit worried about that, not having kids' church. We're a bit smaller of a church. But I'm just going to pray, and then we're going to transition over there. We're going to just celebrate these baptisms and then have some morning tea together. So let me pray. God, I thank you so much for who you are. I thank you for Gabby and Lucia who are stepping up today to be baptized. I pray that you'll be with them today. I pray that you help this be a special moment. I pray that you'll be with all of us and you'll help us remember the special moments we've had with you. I really thank you for the privilege of getting to celebrate a baptism at our church. And we just pray that you'll, you'll bless today and you'll bless us as we leave this place. In your amazing name.